welcome to uh, the second Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, it is also Father's Day. Uh, it is also Pride Month, and it is also Juneteenth. So a lot of things uh, to be grateful for, uh, to celebrate, and it's so wonderful to see uh, each and every one of you here uh, this morning. And so our century words this morning is as read, is as <clears throat> written. We hunger for the holy, longing for the living God. We gather as children of God, rejoicing in the promise. I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit, as our liturgists uh, this morning comes forward to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. <clears throat> Our relationship with our fathers are complicated. For some of us, our father's love is like God's love. Too easy, too long, too wide, too strong to measure. Some of our dads are here, some are never here. For some of us, God's love fills in the empty spaces our fathers left behind. All of us are shaped by the relationships of our, or lack of relationship with our fathers. On this day, when we remember what it means to have a father or be a father, we recognize the importance of fathers in our community. We pledge the congregation to love and nurture fathers among us so that they will manifest the love of God in all that you do. Amen. Uh, join us in opening prayer. Come on, God. Be with us here as much as the deer long and the spleen as the soul long. We long to know that you are with us. When the moment of sorrow comes, we need you. Help us remember that you are always with us and that your love is steadfast. Put your soul in
And each week, as I mentioned, um, on our community prayer board, if you know of anyone who is in need of prayer and would like to be listed on our community prayer board, please contact myself or Frank, and we can get those names listed on our community prayer board. And if you know of anyone who is on the community prayer board and would like to be uh, taken off the list, but we will continue to pray, uh, keep them in our prayers, uh, please also contact us. That way each week uh, our community prayer board can be updated. And as you hear and read the names on our prayer board, I ask that you keep these names in your prayers, in your heart, and lift it up to the Lord. Christy Blaukamp, Carla Karachi, Nicole Howardo, Phyllis Swinerton, <clears throat> Dean Hunter, Darian Wolf, Greg Pop, Greg Erickson, Penny Marshall, Jackie Smith, Patty and Gil Barkle, Michael Hawkins. Lorraine Segura, Barbara Wood, Nicole Tomlin, Ruth Price, Lee Bigford, Summer Guerrero, Rita Tomlin, Dorothy Ann Mead, Marissa Backwood, and Beverly Betters. With the Lord, Tammy Roy, and Michael Hunt. Lord, in your joy and mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And so at this time, this is our sharing, uh, sharing our joys and concerns. Sharing our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys or concerns? Uh, that would like to be shared this morning. Any joys or concerns? Yes, Caroline. My insurance finally approved my cataract surgery, but I don't have an appointment yet. Well, that's a, a, a good step. So uh, we are thankful for that. Thank you for sharing with us. Lord, in your joy, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. That's, that's good news to hear, Caroline. Thank you. Yes, Marlene. My confirmation made me want to share. One of the members of our church suggested to me, and they're both doing well here, different things wrong with them, so they'd like to be found in prayer for them. Okay. And that's Alicia Blankenship? Yes. Okay. And David. Oh, Alicia and David. Okay, so, so Alicia and David Blankenship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Amen. Thank you, Marilyn. They'll be on uh, our prayer, community prayer board time. Any other joys or concerns? Yes, Mary. In the concern department, I was speaking with Rita Barco this mm -hmm. week, and he told me that Patty really isn't showing improvement, mm -hmm. and he is concerned that if the Medicare stops paying for her ongoing care in that care facility, that she may have to come home. He says, but we'll deal with it when it happens. So mm -hmm. it's ongoing prayers for the Barco. The Barco care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Any other joys or concerns that would like to be shared this morning? Yes, Marjorie. Um, prayers for my uh, niece and nephew, um, Taylor and Blake Marshall, because they're going through their first Father's Day after mm -hmm. my brother died when they were three. Um, but on the praise side, where they both participated, um, the, the 14 year old Blake even willingly. Bad service last weekend, which um, impressed everybody and, um, and seemed like a good sign that Father's Days are hard. Yes. So, uh, that's the Lord, uh, a mercy and a joy. So, Lord, in your mercy and joy, hear our prayers. Amen. And I would like to say 
welcome back as well, Marker. Um, we've missed you, and we, we uh, you were, even though you were with family for uh, grieving, but we know that you were there uh, in support, and our prayers were constantly with you uh, while you were with your family. So thank you. We're happy to be and have you back. We're kind of almost immediately back to Maine. Yeah. It may or may not be for next weekend, but that'll be about a week, two weeks again. Okay. Well, we let us know. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be that I go back and then um, July 20 or so I come home and she um, does a pass on to pay caregivers, but she's been doing a lot of delusions and I'm not sure how that's going to go for her. Okay, well, we will continue um, to keep her in our prayers mm -hmm. as well as your niece and nephew and uh, your sister in law and your family. But we are happy to be. Any other joys or concerns that would like to be shared this morning? And speaking of Father's Day, I want to uh, wish all the fathers here, or the ones that are not here, a, a blessed and happy Father's Day. Let's give them a, a round of applause <clears throat> for all you father figures uh, that are here today. We are grateful uh, for your many uh, wisdoms, your guidance, your leadership, and your care. Uh, not only in your family, but here in our church family. So, Lord, in your joy, hear our prayer. Amen. Any other joys or concerns that would like to be shared this morning? And those joys and concerns that are not spoken, that are not shared uh, for us to hear, that's okay. I encourage you to keep them in your prayers. Keep them in your heart and keep them lifted up to the Lord. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we hear the stories in the Bible of Christ's forgiving love. We look at them from a distance, believing that we can never be forgiven by God. We want to measure our sins on a grand scale, but in truth, it is the little way in which we disown you and run from your presence that form the foundation of our wrongdoing. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to be open to the needs of others. We have so much that we can do, and sometimes, O oh Lord, we are overwhelmed by the needs. We become paralyzed and fearful. Ease our hearts and give us strength and courage to be active witnesses for you. Give us such faith that we may place our whole trust in you. This day we have brought before you the names, the joys, and concerns of people near and dear to us to be lifted in prayer. Some of these needs are for healing, for comfort, for solace. Others are prayers of celebration and joy. All of these things we offer to you. Help us to truly believe in your abiding love in answer to all. In answering to all the prayers that we willingly place our lives in your care. Heal and restore us, for we ask this in Jesus' name, as Jesus teaches us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join me today in scripture reading from Galatians chapter 3, 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinary until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinary. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized, 
baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The story, the stories of God to the people of God. Praise be to God. At this time is our offering. Uh, do I have a volunteer to take our offering plate around? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
first conference that is the good part is participating with yeah. everybody else. Exactly. And worship services mm -hmm. and uh, dinners and yeah. lunches. And, and the fellowship and the yeah. connecting. And um, as you heard from Charlene, Charlene and I will both have a report uh, in a few weeks uh, with our uh, insights and our perspectives and experience for the annual conference. And um, I returned last night, and as Charlene here uh, participated online, I was in person, and I have to say that being in person after two years, you know, at annual conference, and for those of you who have attended annual conference, knows the, the joy and the, the reunion and the connecting in that and seeing so many friends, uh, not not all, but you know, and uh, there was a good portion that was online because uh, it would show the screen and it showed how many people were logged in online and there were over about 400 that were viewed online and in person, there was about over 300 of us. So it was a good, you know, uh, fraction of those who were online and those who were, who were in person, but, uh, it was a very much needed time uh, for clergy and lady uh, to, to, to be together you know, after two years. And, and my favorite part of any conference is the ordination and commissioning service. That's the service that always uh, uh, reminds me of my calling. That's the service that, uh, that just you know, changes uh, lives, it touches hearts. And seeing it online is different from being there in person, as Charlene said. And just, you know, the worship service and the lunches and the dinners and breakfasts, but we'll share uh, our uh, uh, perspective, our um, reflection and our report uh, in a couple weeks with the annual conference. And for those of you who missed it, it's on the CalPAC UMC uh, web, um, YouTube. So you can always go back and watch it, um, what uh, Charlene here viewed, and, and that way you don't miss anything of what was discussed, what was voted on, uh, what was preached on, and things of that nature. So uh, in your spare time, when you get a chance, for those of you who weren't able uh, to watch it while it was live, it is uh, on the CalPAC UMC uh, uh, YouTube. And I believe that's uh, all the announcements that we have uh, for today. So as... Uh, and the bulletin. Yeah. So I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit for our second hymnal. Our second hymn. And our second hymn is found in the Blue United Methodist book, number 558. 558, We Are the Church. <laughs>
gospel reading comes from, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. And for those of you who would like to follow along, it's uh, printed in the bulletin. And this is how it's written. Then they arrived at the, at the country of Gerasim, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in the house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wild. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the, at, had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. These are the inspiring words of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful for this time that we are able to hear your word. And as we hear your word, Lord, I ask that you please allow the Holy Spirit uh, to guide and lead us so when we leave the sacred space, we are able to take your word and share it with all those that we come across in this uh, city, in this town, in this state, and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So today, uh, my sermon, I'll be preaching on the epistle, which is from Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 23 to 29. And my sermon title is, Do Not Be Locked In to Yourself. Do Not Be Locked In to Yourself. And so the text uh, for today's message, as I mentioned, uh, from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Galatians, he was dealing with a very important issue. The Galatians have been deceived by false teachers. They were confused about what the gospel of Jesus, of Jesus Christ was. And they were at risk. They were at risk of losing salvation and freedom and the joy and the comfort that the gospel message gives to us. And you know that we are also uh, at risk all the time as well. Every single one of us is at risk. You, I, uh, majority, and I would say mostly all of Christ's followers. Unless, unless we are really careful and deliberate about teaching and preaching the gospel, in all its purity and power, we are all at risk of losing its benefits. And so Paul the Apostle uses a, a couple of images. One is about imprisonment and freedom. 
other about putting uh, on Christ, being in Christ. And these are very helpful illustrations. But we need to understand that imprisonment meant something different back then, in the time when Paul uh, was writing this. Today you have your judgment, and then you go to jail or prison. Back then, people were imprisoned while waiting for their judgment. And it means that those who were imprisoned were lawbreakers. They were guilty, and they were kept from doing more harm. And they were waiting, waiting for their judgment. But Paul the Apostle speaks about the law as imprisonment for all people. And what does this tell us? Well, one thing uh, it tells us that we are all lawbreakers when it comes to God's law, meaning that we are guilty. And second, we are kept in prison so that we won't do any more harm, that we won't cause any more harm, or we won't repeat the same uh, uh, harm that we did to get ourselves into prison. But God's law prevents us from doing those uh, wrongful uh, and, and bad things. And Paul also speaks about judgment. Judgment is sure and it's coming. And that we are uh, all guilty of that, but no one will escape justice. Uh, even though we witness uh, cases and cases over and over again where we think uh, justice hasn't been served or where we know and rejoice that justice has been served, uh, but of course in God's kingdom, uh, God will judge uh, those and justice will be served. So yes, however, some can object, but there are so many, so many good people in the world. So many good people in the world who do only good things. And yes, the answer is that they do it exactly because they are imprisoned by God's law. They follow God's law. But what happens with uh, society when for a while there are no law enforcement available? When everyone can do whatever they want without fear and consequences? Yes, of course, terrible things happen. And this is how the prison of law works. Even those uh, very good people that follow every uh, law to the T um, ask why do good things? And some of them might answer, well, because it's the right thing to do. Because I'm a good person. Because I want to do good. And it's about the law uh, that's making them feel accountable and forcing them to strive to be good. And this is where people are, imprisoned by the law. And you can say it's God's law, but not all because they are already or they've had uh, done something wrong. But to prevent them from acting according to the evilness or potential that we all uh, carry uh, within ourselves, this situation is always before Christ. We come before Christ, we come before God, on our knees, praying, uh, pleading for forgiveness. And sometimes this can be a way of imprisonment in ourselves, locking ourselves within ourselves. And we tell ourselves that we're guilty. Some might not seem or feel that they're guilty. And it's because of what you have in your heart. Some can be uh, rebellious. Some can be against God. It could be out of anger, lust, jealousy, and so on. And you may strive to be good in your own, uh, in your own prison, in your own box, but it won't change the fact that you're guilty. And it won't change or take away your judgment day. But then suddenly, suddenly you receive the message. It is difficult to believe and it doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, it's true. Someone has taken your place. Someone has taken responsibility for what you have done and for all that you uh, have failed to do. And this person has taken your place and received in full 
what you deserve. And as a result, you are free to go. The doors are open. Uh, the, the, the box, the jail, the prison doors are open. You have been forgiven. You have been justified. Your judgment has taken place. And it has happened. You are free to go. Free. No more guilt. No more uh, fear of judgment. You are absolutely free from an uh, imprisonment of yourself. And this is what happened to the Galatians. Paul had preached to them the good news that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had taken their place and that they uh, were no longer under uh, accusations of the law, that they were forgiven, that they were free, free to enjoy the new life and to wait for the age to come. And this message is the power for salvation. And initially, uh, the Galatians had left their prison and enjoyed their freedom. But then, it sounds really silly, then they gradually went back, went back to their box, went back to their, uh, to their corners, their prison, their jail, however you want uh, to interpret it. And yes, and they did it on their own, voluntarily. Even though Paul was telling them that Jesus Christ had already taken their place and that they were free, they slowly went back to where they were. And they couldn't believe that this uh, wonderful message was true. Instead, they believed that if they went back, they will do something good. That they will be able to stand in their own judgment day on their own. But some might uh, object and say, well, that's silly. That they were already forgiven. That there was nothing left for them to do but to enjoy their freedom <coughs> and to continue uh, being uh, followers of Christ and to believe what God had did for them. But they chose to go back. They chose to put the trust in themselves and not in Christ. I mean, some people might say, well, you know, I trust myself. Why not? But if we uh, trust ourselves too much, we lose focus and we lose purpose of why we trust and rely in Christ. And this is why Paul was so upset and so concerned. The thing is, we all do exactly the same thing. Yes, most of all. You, me, every Christ follower, we are all exactly uh, sometimes silly in this way, or sometimes we be resolved to go back to what we were doing before, and we try to uh, figure out, well, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? Or if you've done, been doing something for so long and there's no change, well, you know, let me just go back to, uh, to what I was doing before. And that's what God gives us, new creation, a new day. But to put Christ before us, because Christ comes before us. And Jesus gives us freedom, an unconditional gift, regardless of who we are. And something that we could uh, never achieve or and never merit, he gives is a gift. But we, we want to walk back into our, our box. We want to walk back into our, our prisons. We want to make it on our own without relying on Christ. And so, there are a few questions that you can uh, just reflect on uh, to yourself. Is Do you ever wonder about any of these? Have I been good enough to stand before my, my creator? Have you been good enough to stand before God? And is my faith, is my faith strong enough to be saved? Is my faith strong enough for me to be saved? I mean, those are just questions to reflect on. And when you ask yourself that, then you start thinking of the things that you're doing. You're like, oh, well, I've been doing this, I've been doing that. Well, what has Christ been doing in you? What has Christ been doing through you? And have I been a, a decent enough uh, friend? Have I been a decent enough uh, teacher? Have I been a decent enough sibling? Have I been a decent enough spouse? Or have I been a decent enough sibling in Christ? 
to my congregation? Have I done what I need to do? Or have I failed too many times? And if I stand before God today, will he be pleased with me? Or will he not? And so those are just reflect questions uh, to reflect on yourself for the things that you're doing in Christ and through Christ, or the things that you're doing on your own. Giving yourself the credit, saying, oh, I'm doing all this on my own. I've, I've received this on my own. I'm doing this on my own. But when we go back to our uh, scriptures, when we uh, look back in our faith and how we were shaped, everything we do is because of Christ. Everything we do is because of God. And sometimes when we are in situations, when we are in relationships, when we are uh, in, in certain circumstances, and it doesn't work out the way we planned it, when it fails, who do we blame? Do we blame ourselves? Do we blame God? And those are just reflect questions to kind of help with our journey, to help with our faith, to strengthen our faith. And, and, and not just with ourselves, but in our families, in our church, and in our community. But some might wonder, have you ever worried of any of these things as you uh, leave from church on Sunday? Do you ever worry about these things uh, from Monday through Saturday? Do you ever question yourself these things, or is it only here when you come into the doors of the church? And you don't have to answer. It's just a reflect question. But Paul, as we heard uh, from uh, when Ben read uh, the epistle, Paul was just so upset about this. Paul was so upset at the Galatians because he was telling them, don't go back to your old ways. God created a new, a new day, a new creation, a new you, a new me. But they, uh, <clears throat> they still went back to their own ways. And it means that you think you need to merit, to earn God's favor, to be good enough to be your own. And you think that standing uh, before God depends on you and how well uh, you have behaved in your time, in your box, in your prison or jail cell. But you can't merit his favor or his uh, blessings, as you would want to call it. There is nothing that you can do to take away the wrong that you have done or to make up for your failures or just whatever it is that you carry guilt about. Because the, new, the good news is that you've been forgiven, that you don't have to. It doesn't mean that you can go out there and break all the rules, no, but to know that we can repent and repent and pray and ask for forgiveness because even though you're already forgiven, but it's our, our uh, humble hearts, our willing humble hearts when we come before God to acknowledge who God is and to acknowledge who we are. So if you worry about any of these things and you're choosing to stay uh, in your locked self, then you need to hear what Jesus said. And Jesus said, whoever you are, whatever you have done and will do, I have already taken it all upon me. You are free, you are forgiven, and you can go. The law will not accuse you anymore. There will be no judgment uh, day for you. You are absolutely free. Go and rejoice and live as a free person. And so some of you are thinking like, well, what does that mean? It means that you are free not to worry on how a good person you are and whether you have done the right thing or whether you have failed uh, or not in your responsibilities, it doesn't matter because Jesus has already forgiven you. The Father has already forgiven you. You don't need to worry about the last day anymore. When you trust that Jesus has taken your place, there is no day of judgment for you anymore. Trust and faith. This is all that you need. Your faith is uh, as an outstretched arm that receives God's gift of forgiveness. But shouldn't we do at least something? No, yes, 
You receive your freedom by faith. When you trust that this is true, it's that simple. You believe, you follow, and abide. And there are no conditions attached. Jesus doesn't say when you become better or if you do this or that, uh, if you stop doing this or that. No, there are no conditions attached. It's a pure gift of this gracious love from God. And it's yours. It is. And I've uh, mentioned it in my messages <clears throat> over time. But you have to be willing to accept it. You have to be willing to accept it truly and faithfully in your heart. So now, instead of focusing on yourself, you can focus on others. You can focus on Jesus with gratitude, and you can focus on others and how to serve them. And here's a good uh, uh, to, a picture to remember, uh, the picture that Paul used. You are in Christ. You have put on Christ. You are sons and daughters of God. And what does this all mean, and what does it mean for us? More great news. It is not uh, that you simply are free, but you have also received this as a new identity, as a new person, as a new day, this, in this new creation. And this important identity will remain forever. As many of you uh, were baptized in Christ, have put on Christ. When you receive the Holy Spirit in your baptism and the Holy Communion, when you hear the gospel message, something mind-blowing happens. You are united with the Son of God, with Jesus Christ. You are united with him in a mysterious way. The same Spirit who unites the Father and the Son now unites you with our Heavenly Father and the Son in one divine family. All the things that separate our society in this world won't matter uh, anymore in God's family. All his children receive this new identity, a new day, a new creation, a child of God, and this is who you are. Paul explains, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. What is this about? Just a little note, what is it not? And yet, sometimes it's silly that people keep using uh, the verse in the ordination debate, no female, no male, equals anyone should be ordained in the public ministry of Jesus. Paul here is not talking about God's gift of the office of ministry. He's talking about God's undeserved grace given to us through baptism. And Paul is saying that before God, we are all one. We are all equal. None of us deserve his grace because he abundantly gives it to everyone. It's our responsibility to open our hearts, re uh, receive it, accept it, and act on it, and not leave uh, or live continuously in our own lost selves. His grace makes uh, us equal in Christ. We are all equal, unworthy, and we are all equally forgiven. We are we are all equally uh, in need, and we are all given equally salvation. And God loves each and every one of us. God's grace is what creates this new community in Christ, God's own family. And God's grace, God's grace gives us this new identity as children of God. And this new identity, it has to shape who we are here and now and how we live. As Paul said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
Jesus doesn't take away our uh, identity. Jesus doesn't take our identity away as a friend, as a, a Christ follower, as a spouse, as a teacher, as a neighbor, as an employer, and so on. Instead, he fills all these identities with new concepts, with love, joy, peace. It is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. And as you live in flesh, in all your uh, places and days, you live in faith, trusting that you are a forgiven child of God, and you are free not to worry about yourself because you put your trust in Christ. And that's what Christ, uh, that's what Chris, Christian freedom is about. Letting uh, our worries go and allowing Christ uh, in us and faithfully and abiding, following Christ. And this is where your joy and peace and security will come from. Knowing that you are free, that you are in Christ, and this is who you are. Amen. And as Mary makes her way to the piano, I invite you to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is found in the blue you and, uh, no, I'm sorry, not in the blue, in our faith we sing. The faith we sing Number 2151. So spin, spin black book. The Faith We Sing. Number 2151. I'm so glad Jesus lives in me. Please be seated. <clears throat> 